bringing you news and information from around the Pacific Command. This is your AFN Pacific Report. Thanks for joining us on this edition of AFM Pacific Report. I'm Senior Airman Therese Garnier. During a Pentagon news conference on Friday, Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel said sexual assault in the military is a crime and a problem that all military members at all levels will have to fight. The press conference came on the heels of a meeting with President Barack Obama the day before, which included all the service secretaries and chiefs of staff. Hagel said the meeting was important because it gave the president an opportunity to ask questions directly and to get a sense of the serious problem facing the military. Hagel noted all the meeting's participants are committed to solving sexual assaults, saying not one of the leaders wants this to be their legacy. Turning to Yokosuka, Fast Pack Marines teamed up with sailors aboard USS Curtis Wilbur to train against seaborne threats. Fleet Anti-Terrorism Security Team Pacific or Fast Pack Marines prepare for real-world combat on the high seas. It's just something that we train to be ready for. We don't know what we're going to encounter in a real-world environment. It's just one more thing that we know that we can do. And being able to actually come out here and train on, a, on an actual ship with actual personnel, it's a very valuable lesson. This training on board USS Curtis Wilbur helps Marines build vital communication between U.S. forces. The goal of this training is to enhance the, uh, the communication and training between USS Curtis Wilbur and the Marines of the Fleet to Anti-Terrorism Security Team Pacific. The uh, visit, board, search and seizure is a common skill between the two uh, platforms. For these Marines, shipboard mobility is a skill that could mean the difference between life or death. This type of training is vital to Curtis Wilbur and Fastback. On the Navy side of this house, this helped us determine how we would actually utilize Fast Marines to augment our security forces. For the Marines, this was a tremendous opportunity to exercise onboard a guided missile destroyer. Joint training between sailors and Marines maximizes combat efficiency and increases Fast Pack's ability to take on any threat anywhere. Seaman Sonia Wicker, Yokosuka Naval Base, Japan. Staying in Japan, Marine Wing Support Squadron 171's motor transportation has two sides, maintenance and operations. Lance Corporal Amy Douglas reports on the operations side. MWSS 171's motor transportation operators have a hand in everything on Marine Corps Air Station Iwakuni. Their responsibilities include bringing cargo to the flight line and food to the chow halls while maintaining their vehicles. Motor T here on Iwakuni, we have uh, so many licenses that uh, we need to help operate, get the uh, ordinance or cargo or anything place to place. And if a truck breaks down, a P-19 or anything on the flight line, it needs to get towed away. So we have wreckers to operators that can do that. The maintainers from motor transportation perform vehicle repairs, whereas the operators provide preventive maintenance checks and other small operations to vehicles in the motor pool to keep them deployment ready. Trucks are deployed here and there from our station. So we need to make sure those trucks are up and running. We got to communicate with them. So we just got to make sure everything's good. Motor transportation can deploy all over the world because they're useful to most missions. Motor T lets you travel a lot from anywhere from Australia as a bus driver to ITEX, which is in uh, 29 Palms for pre-deployment, to Korea, where I just came back from just uh, operating for supplies or for chow, which uh, the troops needed in the field. MWSS 171's motor transportation operators continue to support the air station mission with three deployments scheduled this summer. Lance Corporal Amy Douglas, Marine Corps Air Station Iwakuni, Japan. Retiring from the military is considered a milestone achievement for service members and their families. Some opt for a rather subdued ceremony, others choose a more formal and traditional one. While a lucky few have the opportunity to bring their military career to a close aboard a large and significant piece of naval history anchored in Hawaii. Navy Chief Robert Feinberg wanted to make his last day in the Navy a memorable one. I'll be finished in 24 years. And so he decided to retire aboard one of the most enduring military memorials in U.S. history, the USS Missouri Battleship. I think that it brings a historical significance to anybody that does a ceremony here. It was on these decks that the Japanese surrender of World War II took place. And the Missouri is also the largest warship ever built by the U.S. Navy, helping give it the well-deserved nickname of the Mighty Mo. Chief Feinberg isn't alone in choosing the decks of the Missouri to mark a special milestone. The battleship is one of the most popular places in the Pacific for formal ceremonies. Oh, they love doing it here just because of the historical aspect of it. 
Last year alone, there were more than a thousand events held aboard the battleship Missouri Memorial. Everything from reenlistments to promotions to retirements to commissionings. We get to be able to honor them by giving them a retirement, one that they can, they can cherish the rest of their lives. So that when sailors like Robert Feinberg render a final salute aboard the mighty Mo, the legacy of their career becomes part of the historic legacy of the USS Missouri. Nick Tovo, Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. Coming up, security forces give lessons on life at Misawa. But first, let's take a look around the Pacific Command in today's snapshots. A sailor repels from the boat deck of USS Tortuga during a visit, board, search, and seizure training exercise in the South China Sea. American and Korean soldiers set up a decontamination site during a joint training exercise at Camp Carroll, Korea. The guided missile cruiser USS Lake Erie launches a missile during a U.S. Navy and Missile Defense Agency test in the mid-Pacific. And that's a look around the Pacific Command in today's Snapshots. The choices kids make can often have long-lasting consequences, both good and bad. Helping them understand that fact is a part of the lesson plan for two security forces airmen at Misawa. Security forces airmen play many roles on Misawa Air Base. They protect and guard residents and property, but they also help to shape and guide the youth in the community through school presentations. There's a big leadership role as far as security forces goes, and uh, we're here for everybody on base, um, not just uh, the active duty members, we're also here for the dependents. A recent visit to Cummings Elementary focused on serious topics that most all kids are faced with at one point in time. The main goal is to help these kids with basically stealing. I guess stealing is a big problem. Growing up, you're going to steal something because you're a kid. You know, you don't, it's not that you don't know better, it's just, you know, you think it's cool. And that's why we're here today to let them know, you know, it's not cool to steal, it's not cool to fight, it's not cool to bully. A lot of times it's immaturity and they don't exactly know what they're doing. They don't think they're hurting anybody. Parents think kids will be kids. And in a sense, that's true. But in the long run, it needs to be taken care of early. Everything you do, you carry that on with you throughout your life and you mold and shape off of that. So if we could get them to stop stealing or bullying at this age, hopefully they're going to try to get other people to stop as they grow up. They seemed really interested. They had a lot of questions, a lot of answers. So I feel like they uh, they took it really well. I think the, the footballs and having them come up on stage and the candy, definitely the candy, kept them more involved. And keeping the children interested could make all the difference in their lives. All it takes is that one person to stand up for what's right. And people are going to see that. And then the kids are going to build off that one person. And they're also going to hopefully stand up for what's right. Airman First Class Michael Kantak, Misawa Air Base, Japan. Just in time for the warm weather, a service member in Korea decided to hit the swimming pool to face a personal challenge. Swimming enthusiasts gathered at the Yongsan Indoor Swimming Pool to take a step up from regular swimmers to professional lifeguards. Major Timothy Hale, one of the participants, joined the course to help develop his swimming skills. I'm just wanting to build my um, proficiency uh, in swimming. Uh, I thought this would be a good way to do that. Using the flotation device, he learned how to rescue victims in various situations. Because Hale hasn't swum for many years, it was a personal challenge for him to complete the class. It's not something I've done uh, in a long time swimming. Um, so I, again, I thought it was a great opportunity to reintroduce myself to swimming and uh, at the same time gain a, uh, an, an additional skill set and knowledge that I didn't have before. The skill set of being a lifeguard is valuable in that these techniques can be applied to almost any water activity situation. Hale is looking forward to contributing to his unit by sharing what he has learned. I mean, specific to the mission that I support, um, it has no direct uh, relationship, but uh, in terms of um, a skill set that I can bring to my unit, uh, it helps. Uh, it's that added uh, safety measure uh, that I can help bring to the unit in terms of just maintaining their safety. Major Hale finished the four-day course and received a lifeguarding and CPR certificate from the American Red Cross, successfully accomplishing his goal to become a lifeguard. Petty Officer Mark Alvarez, Yongsan, Korea. For years, comic book conventions or comic cons have been held at locations across the globe to include the island of Okinawa. At this year's event, Camp Foster's Community Center found itself inundated with thousands of fans, some dressed in colorful costumes. 
Thousands of people from across Okinawa came together to share their love of comics, anime, and cosplay at Comic-Con 2013. The event took place in Camp Foster's Community Center and drew a large crowd of enthusiastic attendees, many of which showed up in character. On hand for the event was Justin Cook, an original voice actor for the Dragon Ball Z series. Yeah, he actually, he, he talked to me like I was Vegeta. He did the voice of one of the characters, so that, that was awesome, hearing the voice and, and seeing him actually play the part was cool. One of the most popular attractions featured a booth that would zombify guests. I am zombified. We have a booth in there that is doing zombie makeup. Um, they are very good. It's toilet paper, tish, uh, toilet paper, glue, a little bit of fake blood, some makeup. There you go. Camp Foster's Comic Con has grown in size every year since its start and is sponsored by Marine Corps Community Services and The Exchange. The turnout is way more than we ever could have hoped for. Uh, we actually had uh, name tags uh, given away, guests and um, name tags that said guests on them given away and we had them numbered. They were gone within the first half hour so we know more people have come through these doors than we could have ever expected. We're super excited to see what next year is going to bring. Giveaways, board games, video games and a showing of Iron Man 2 entertain those who flock to Comic Con. Lance Corporal Eric Waddell, Camp Foster, Japan. That's it for this newscast. From all of us here at AFM Pacific, thanks for watching.